The topic for this video was suggested by subscriber Elena D. Before discussing the possible murder of Pope St. Pius X, let's do some background. As you may recall from your high school history textbooks during World War I, the Allied powers included Britain, France, Russia, and the United States, and Italy. The Allied countries fought against the Central Powers, which included Germany, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and Bulgaria. So, Italy was an enemy of Germany and Austria-Hungary during the war. According to newspaper accounts in 1917, Italian Secret Service agents believed that anti-Italian plots were being hatched in a house next door to the German embassy in Vienna. They determined that a bundle of documents giving their desired information was locked in a safe with a specially devised poison gas guard. It was reported that they managed to find a couple of safe crackers who were willing to undertake the risk of opening the safe. The safe crackers were smuggled across the border into enemy territory in Austria. They cracked the safe and brought back the papers to Rome. It was reported that the papers implicated Monsignor Rudolf von Gerlach, of whom the Italian police said that prior to entering the priesthood he had been an officer in the German army. Von Gerlach was said to be working at the Vatican, and he was accused of being the head of a German spy network that sent messages to Germany via coded messages in columns of Italian newspapers. It was reported that the same night that the papers were brought back, somebody tipped off von Gerlach, who was Pope Benedict XV's valet. It was said that von Gerlach managed to make it across the Swiss border before Italian authorities could arrest him in Swiss territory. An accomplice named Pomerici was with him was ordered shot. Von Gerlach was found guilty of being involved in the bombings of two Italian battleships. The Benedetto Brin was destroyed in a huge explosion. 454 crew members were killed. The following year, the Leonardo da Vinci was sunk by an explosion, causing the death of 248 men. It was reported that the Italian police burst in the doors of Von Gerlach's home only two hours after he had fled. In his house, the police discovered evidence of a score of other pro-German plots, and based on that information, it said, the following day, more than 300 arrests took place all over Italy. Von Gerlach was only 32 years old. According to the press clipping, he knew how to worm himself into the confidences of people who mattered. Good-looking, elegant, and like all German master spies, unusually well-supplied with money. He was a social success, and though some of his drawing room conquests were hardly in keeping with being a priest, von Gerlach was undoubtedly popular. It was said that von Gerlach so ingratiated himself within the Vatican that he was appointed to one of the most important places in the Vatican, that of being the Pope's valet, an office that brought him into close touch with all that was happening within the Vatican. Then after the war in 1919, a new charge was leveled that von Gerlach had been involved in the murders of Pope St. Pius X and two of his cardinals, Rampola and Ferrata, and that he had done this on behalf of Germany and Austria-Hungary. This was proposed in a book by a priest named Abby Daniel. The book was called Baptism of Blood. Unfortunately, it's now out of print. However, we do have newspaper summaries of the book available. Abby Daniel claimed that there was a Central Powers plot at the Vatican long before the war broke out, which started to take shape during the latter days of the pontificate of Leo XIII, whose pro-French policies were distasteful to the German empires. He said that the first move was to prevent Cardinal Mariana Rampolla from becoming the Pope. Early in the conclave, it seemed as if Rampolla was the favored candidate at the conclave to find a successor to Pope Leo XIII. Emperor Francis Joseph of Austria, therefore, invoked a papal veto, an ancient rule that allowed monarchs to veto certain candidates. Cardinal Rampolla was ultimately defeated, though at that time he had been losing support in favor of Cardinal Sardo, and Pope Pius X was chosen. And I'll do a video about the papal veto in the future. It should be noted that one of the first acts of Pope Pius X was to abrogate the papal veto and to establish the penalty of excommunication for any cardinal who attempted to exert influence at a conclave at the behest of a foreign government. Abby Daniel asserted that Pope St. Pius X was inclined towards spiritual affairs, and his kindly and easygoing temperament made him an unwitting victim of the system of plots and counterplots that were being woven within the Vatican. And according to Abbey Daniel, these plots were to isolate Pope St. Pius X from non-German influences. And he claimed that at the middle of these 
was Monsignor von Gerlach, who was also the valet of Pope Pius X before he became the valet of Pope Benedict XV. Abbey Daniel claimed that von Gerlach was aided by Cardinal Mary de Val. According to the book, one year prior to the outbreak of the First World War, Pope Pius X was starting to recognize his isolation, and so he summoned his old friend Cardinal Rampolla for a conference. And at this stage, according to the story, the plot started to reveal itself. Rampolla was supposed to visit the Pope on December 16th of 1913. That day, the Cardinal had taken part of a religious ceremony, but within 24 hours he was dead. According to Abby Daniel, a strong box containing his papers had disappeared and was never found. And he said that there was talk of an autopsy, but nothing ever came of it. Cardinal Rampolla, according to Abby Daniel, was the first victim of this plot. A few days before his death, it is believed that Pope St. Pius X sent one or two letters to Emperor Francis Joseph, imploring him to end the war and threatening him with excommunication unless he did so. The last letter is said to have been composed by Pope St. Pius X with the assistance of Cardinal Ferrata on August 17th. But that night, Pope Pius X was taken ill. His condition quickly deteriorated, and he died just three days later. It said that Cardinal Ferrata left him only once during his illness, and when he returned to the room, he found Monsignor von Gerlach leaving the Pope's chamber. It was only a short time after that that the Pope died, as mysteriously as had Rampolla. The ensuing conclave shows Pope Benedict XV as the next Pope, and Pope Benedict was considered neutral between the Allies and the Central Powers. However, according to the book, it was stipulated that Cardinal Ferrata, who had reportedly helped draft the threatening letter to Emperor Francis Joseph, would be the Secretary of State. According to Abbey Daniel, Ferrata immediately started to clear the Vatican of German influence, and this was unacceptable to the Germans. For his personal safety, Daniel claims, he took up his residence outside the Vatican. One day, a cup of coffee was brought to his desk. He drank it and immediately fell violently ill. Two days later, he died on October 10, 1914. Daniel said that there was an investigation and powdered glass was found in the sugar the Cardinal had used. This was apparently accounted for by a broken container of glass, but it was subsequently found that one of the servants of the Cardinal's household had disappeared the day of his death. Daniel said that that servant was subsequently identified as an officer of the German artillery who had served at one time as an orderly to Monsignor von Gerlach. So, was Pope St. Pius X murdered? One priest commented in the New York Times, Abby Daniel would be more convincing if he had restrained somewhat the violence of his obvious modernism. For example, Daniel strongly suggested that Cardinal Raphael Mary Dalval was somehow connected with the German plot. The Cardinal, however, was Pope St. Pius X's trusted Secretary of State, and he was instrumental in the Pope's fight against modernism. Daniel's allegations were beyond libelous. And this urban legend had its roots in newspaper reports from 100 years ago, and it shows that the media wasn't any more reliable 100 years ago than it is now. Regarding the 1915 sinking of the Benedetto Brin, it is now believed that it may have been an accidental explosion. And according to some who investigated the 1916 sinking of the Leonardo da Vinci, it too may have been accidental and caused by an unstable propellant. Let's take a look at the real Rudolf von Gerlach. He was a high school dropout and then joined the Prussian army, where he obtained his high school diploma. So he truly was in the military before becoming a priest, but he was never an officer. But he truly was a disreputable person. While in the military, he went AWOL, and then he went to Paris with a dancer, but he was disciplined for that. But even at that time, he is known to have high debts and a dubious reputation so his parents sent him off to Mexico to find a new start. In Mexico, von Gerlach converted to Catholicism under the influence of the local archbishop, and he returned to Germany and studied philosophy and theology. He was subsequently admitted to the diplomatic school of the Vatican on the recommendation of the Bishop of Trento. He received his ordination through the papal nuncio in Bavaria. He was allowed to go to Rome during the conclave following Pope Pius X's death. So von Gerlach could not have murdered Pope St. Pius X because he never even met or saw the Pope. After the conclave, he met Pope Benedict XV, who took a liking to him and appointed him as Chamberlain. Gerlach was a part of Pope Benedict's closest entourage and had access to the Pope while others didn't. 
and after Italy's entry into the First World War in 1915, the Central Powers were mostly cut off from direct communication with the Vatican. So there had hardly been a conspiracy by Germans to surround Pope Pius X and isolate him as Abbey Daniel contended. Von Gerlach was the only German in the Vatican, and he helped fill the void and facilitate communication during the reign of Pope Benedict XV, and we'll talk more about this in a future installment. The Italian government was suspicious of this communication and decided that von Gerlach was trying to bring the Pope under German control. The Italian military judicial authorities opened an investigation into von Gerlach. So for his own safety, Pope Benedict instructed von Gerlach to go back to Germany. After von Gerlach was gone, a military court in Rome tried him in absentia and sentenced him to life imprisonment. So the newspaper account of von Gerlach being a spy was just World War I propaganda. After the war, von Gerlach became an apostate and married a Protestant Dutch woman. He continued to rack up gambling debts. He was very unpopular with the proto-Nazis in Germany because of his past relationship with the church, so he moved to Great Britain and then to Canada. So the genesis of this urban legend was some propaganda from the First World War. And then a book by a purported priest named Abby Daniel tried to build on the propaganda and took things to the realm of fiction. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installment. We'll be back again in about a week with another one. But in the meantime, please pray for the church.